Amara is a 24-year-old student, wife, mother, and person living with mental illness. She's currently seeking a degree in secondary education, and she's getting her start here at Kirkwood Community College. Join me in welcoming Amara and Confessions of a Manic Pixie Dream Girl. There we go. Let's try this a third time. When my mother mentioned her own mother, a distinctive quiver was audible, one she could never quite cover up. My gram was a vivacious, intelligent, and charismatic woman, but ruined by her insanity. Her madness was a family curse, the reason both she and my grandfather died young, the reason my uncle left for college and never came back, the reason my aunt and my mom can't stand, another and stand one another, and essentially the source of all evils. Grief. In the weeks following Thanksgiving 2014, I found myself rife with postpartum depression. My daughter, Evelyn Iris, was a picture, an image of newborn wrinkles and chub. Her eyes glistened, her coos filled my heart with revulsion, and her nagging constant whines made me think things so terrible that I genuinely feared what I might be capable of. In those days, I didn't allow myself to be alone. No one wants to admit that they've had thoughts of harming their own child. To free myself from the overwhelming embrace of responsibility and plummeting self-esteem, I did what felt natural. I embraced the ride. I was suddenly the object of desire once again. I dated and I made a wretched kind of love. I fed on the excitement of sex with a stranger only to come home to my husband and daughter, thrilled to see one and dreading the other. Now, it should be noted that my husband and I have an open and consensual relationship, and technicalities are a real comfort when you're mad. My sexuality was in overdrive, binging on as much attention as I could find. Looks often didn't matter, age didn't matter, and safety didn't matter much. And as it bled over into the life I would have previously at least tried to keep separate, the impact on my psyche grew, grew my sense of invincibility. I was a goddess. So much of this involved Tris with a lover who lived with us briefly, but there were strangers I'd solicited on Craigslist, OkCupid and FetLife accounts with a growing online presence, and once I was even caught by the police with a lover under the bridge look, overlooking the Cincinnati skyline. This manic obsession was followed by an intense crash, one that rose to a deafening crescendo on the night of my best friend's birthday party. I had baked her a perfect cake, we had a table surrounded by friends, my daughter was fast asleep, and suddenly I found myself plummeting into a low I hadn't known since well before my pregnancy. I don't remember much about that night, but what I do remember is sobbing uncontrollably on my bed, surrounded by the party and desperately wishing they would leave so I could kill myself in peace. Anger. I remember walking into the free psychiatric clinic about a week later, looking my evaluating psychiatrist in the eye and saying simply, I have bipolar disorder, I know. I've done the research, my gram had it, my brother has it, I have it. This is bipolar disorder. A gruff woman of about 60 sized me up and then she went through a list of questions that I'd learned were standard when doing an evaluation for bipolar disorder of any kind. Do you ever have trouble sleeping? Do you ever feel angry out of the blue? Does it ever cause trouble for you, for the people you interact with? Yes. <laughs> what about staying on track? Do you ever feel like you have a lot of extra energy? Do you have problems focusing? Again, yes. <laughs> Do you ever just really want to have a good time or you're extra social? Maybe spending a lot of money, going out with friends more often, or having more sex? This is literally my life. Would other people think you do risky or foolish things sometimes? Yeah. Have, any, have several of these ever happened during the same period of time? And with that, my suspicions were confirmed. I was sent home with pills and a follow-up appointment. Relief and overwhelming rage filled me. How could my mother have missed this? How could my mother and her years and obsessions with treating my brother for the same illness have missed this in me? Didn't she tell me that this wasn't possible? 
Didn't she tell me that everything was okay? How could she do this to me? And then just a very little while later, everything changed again. My husband's stepfather, an abuser, killed himself. My husband's stepfather was responsible for years of profound sexual abuse targeting my husband. He also had bipolar disorder. When Josh chose to come forward, he did so knowing that there was a risk, but choosing the safety of his nephews, he told his family. The next morning, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law shook us awake around 7.30, and then my husband retreated into himself, and he didn't come back for many, many months. Soon after Ben's funeral, we made the decision to move. It was time to leave Kentucky. It was time to find a place where we were safe, where we could heal, where we could grow, where we could rebuild. And it turns out that place was none other than the Crunchberry capital of the world, Cedar Rapids, <laughs> Iowa. I thought that if we came here, if I made myself happy without doing all of the bad things I had done before, I wouldn't have to be sick anymore. Fortunately, you can't really reason with your neurons. Depression. Have you ever heard that neat little fact about menstruating women? that their cycles sync up due to hormones and proximity? Well, it turns out that when you're bipolar and around someone else with bipolar, it can happen to you too. <laughs> we had just moved in with my aunt and uncle, and my uncle really wasn't having that great of a year either. When you're entrenched in bipolar depression, everything hurts. Your body, your brain, even the rhythmic beating of your heart and syncopation of your lungs ache. Suicide is like a glowing exit sign in a movie theater playing your worst memories distorted by pain and time. I was in the hospital, these were my darkest days. I was in the hospital four times between September and February. I don't remember much past itchy scrubs, trite group therapy, and anxiously awaiting visits with the social worker, psychiatrists, and my family. I still slept, or I didn't. And, I, and when I wasn't sleeping, I was bouncing off the walls, uncontrollably energized, and still desperately seeking that exit in the dark. The peak break resulted in my final hospitalization. I had become a burden. I devised a plan to put my daughter in her crib while everyone was out, go into my room, swallow all of my pills, and go to sleep. That's when my husband walked through the door. He knew something was seriously wrong when he saw me, and if he hadn't come home, I wouldn't be here now. I vowed to myself that it would be the last time I went back to the hospital if I could help it. Acceptance. It's been a year since then. I've stayed out of the hospital, and in spite of the stress of losing my great-grandmother and my own mother's attempt to end her life, which resulted in constant traveling and adulting, things are getting better, though. I'm doing extremely well in school, working towards a degree in secondary education, and my daughter is my greatest joy. My husband and I have been in therapy and psychiatric care for over a year, engaging couples therapy as well as individual therapy. Acceptance of bipolar disorder is a process. You don't grow out of it, it doesn't go away, and medications aren't always effective. This illness wins. One in five people diagnosed with bipol bipolar disorder will choose to take their own lives. But it isn't a death sentence. Bipolar may be my illness, but in many ways it's my greatest strength. I'm a more compassionate person for having bipolar disorder. I make fast friends and I never shy from an adventure. I've grown to listen to myself and the voice in the back of my head, and in turn, I've grown wiser. Even my delusions and hallucinations feel more like quiet old friends that I can hush with a simple reminder. I can see through the veil of illness now, something that anyone dealing with psychosis can confirm is profound. Bipolar disorder doesn't define me. It is a part of me, but I am better for it. And that's why I take the pills anyway.